one of the biggest stories uh, according to the news today is of course these ongoing allegations about Jeremy Corbyn uh, last night Theresa May uh, came in on the act as she urged the Labour leader to be open about what his relationship was with the former Czech spy uh, Jan Sarkozy who uh, according uh, to Czech uh, spy documents uh, and according to what he has also uh, been telling reporters over in uh, the Czech Republic um, he says that after his first meeting with Jeremy Corbyn in Parliament in 1986 of course during the Cold War when uh, we're talking about the Soviet bloc being you know, enemy uh, power uh, this uh, former Czech spy wrote he seems to be the right person for fulfilling the task and giving information. In a later memo, uh, the spy said that Mr Corbyn had, quote, an active supply of information on British intelligence services. Uh, now, the chair of the Foreign Affairs Select Committee of the Commons has uh, suggested that it would consider demands to summon Jeremy Corbyn uh, to answer questions about this. And as I say, even the Prime Minister has got in on the act. Although uh, a Tory vice chair uh, uh, who has uh, actually tweeted out about uh, uh, these allegations that Ben Bradley was forced to delete his tweet after Jeremy Corbyn's office threatened to sue him for libel after he alleged that Mr Corbyn had sold British secrets to foreign agents. There are, though, of course, that's been completely denied by the uh, uh, Jeremy Corbyn's office. Uh, but uh, there, of course, are allegations now doing the rounds again, which is denied uh, that sums of money were exchanged. Well, let's Ken Livingstone. He's the former Labour mayor of London, a close friend, of course, of Jeremy Corbyn and someone who's actually uh, also been involved with some of these allegations, having admitted um, uh, to meeting uh, this Czech spy several times. Well, not Czech spy, sorry, having admitted several times to meeting a man who later turned out to be a KGB agent. Uh, Ken Livingston, good morning to you. Hi there. Hi there. Um, now, I have to say, uh, there's been quite a lot of attacks on, for instance, the BBC for not covering these allegations. And I have to say, the first, when they first emerged, my thought was that it was a bit of a silly story and, and, and you know, people making claims about things all these years ago and, and uh, would they really be substantiated? But the allegations have got more and more specific. We've got actual documents, not just what someone is saying a few years later. A lot of the papers are covering this uh, across the board and the media outlets. Um, how damaging do you think think these allegations, whether proven or unproven, whether true or false, are for uh, your friend Jeremy Corbyn? Well, I don't think terribly much because most people now don't believe much of what they read in the papers. And paper sales are plummeting dramatically. People now tend to go online. Yeah, but these stories are also online as well. Yeah, but also it only takes a few minutes to check that it isn't true because you've got this former Czech spy saying that he was paying between £1,000 and £10,000 to between 10 and 15 Labour MPs. Uh, the only three he mentions are Jeremy, um, John McDonnell and me. But the simple fact is John McDonnell wasn't an MP until 10 years later. He was working in local government at the time. So this man claiming he was meeting Jeremy and John and myself, he may very well have met uh, me. I can't remember it. Um, Jeremy seems to recall him coming up and chatting to him once or twice. But basically, why would you want to talk to an opposition backbench MP? What information do we have? Well, that that was that was my first thought was that actually what if if, if he was apparently providing uh, British secrets, I can't imagine who was giving Jeremy Corbyn those British secrets. Yeah, you'll be, you may find it amazing, but Mrs. Satter wasn't allowing me and Jeremy to go through the files of Downing Street I'm or shocked. the Ministry of Defence. All that you know as a backbench MP is what you see in the media. Um, once you're a government minister, then you've got access to stuff. And so, I mean, Jeremy could give you an opinion on virtually everything, like I can. Um, but, I mean, this chap spy... Um, he is was this, most likely sending stuff back, making his work look more important. Is that what it is? This is a spy bigging up what he, who he was, who he was taking out for lunch or having meetings with to make himself look at, look at well, uh, well connected and important. And you're saying there's no truth in any of these allegations, as far as you're aware? No, I mean I can remember you know, a, a Pravda journalist coming up to me just the day after I was elected to Labour's NEC, so at the Labour Party conference. He did an interview and. I automatically assumed he's most likely KGB as well as being a journalist. Um, but it was only when Thatcher expelled him three years later that we, we, that was confirmed. And in all that time, he only ever asked me to do something once. And that was he urged me to denounce um, the fundamentalist um, Muslim terrorists in Afghanistan. Uh, I refused to do it because I wasn't going to do anything that uh, a foreign 
journalist was going to ask me to do, but I rather regret that now. I should have got stuck in earlier. Uh, well, Jeremy Corbyn's spokesman has said the claim that he was an agent, asset or informer for any intelligence agency is entirely false and a ridiculous smear. Like other MPs, Jeremy has met diplomats from many countries. In the 1980s, he met a Czech diplomat. Jeremy neither had nor offered any privileged information to this or any other diplomat. Now, even taking that on face value, given Jeremy Corbyn's long, long history of whenever there is an opportunity to take the side of anyone who is against the British government or indeed Western powers, he has chosen that opportunity. He happily poses in front of a, you know, the Soviet hammer and sickle uh, over the years. He sided with, you know, the IRA with Hamas and everything. It wouldn't be it wouldn't be so far reaching given the 1980s. Uh, that uh, Jeremy Corbyn, an extreme uh, 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 left-wing activist and MP, that he would um, be supportive uh, and be sympathetic to a Soviet government. I mean, the Czech representative of a Czech government, uh, obviously under the under the control of the Soviets at the time. It's not it's not beyond the realms of reality, is it? Well, it is actually because Jeremy wasn't supporting the IRA like me. He was urging the British government to bring an end to the conflict by starting negotiations. We met Jerry Adams. We knew he was ready to start negotiations. Thatcher was refusing to do that. And so we had another 13 years of people being killed I mean, on both sides. And I actually met several senior army officers who had served in Northern Ireland. They were all furious with the government because it wasn't prepared to negotiate. And their men were carrying on being killed. <laughs> OK, but but it, let's go back to the issue of his support for, you know, uh, uh, in the Cold War, whose side was Ken Livingstone on? Well, I wasn't on either side. I thought the Soviet Union was pretty ghastly. I uh, Brezhnev was a monster. Um, but then you'd had American presidents like Lyndon Johnson um, starting wars in Vietnam that led to three and a half million people being killed. The defining thing, if you go back and study what Jeremy and myself have said over those years, we were exposing the lies and smears that um, British and American public were being told. We were never I mean, going to be on the side of a, a communist dictatorship, but neither were we prepared to stand back and say nothing whilst vast numbers of uh, wholly innocent Vietnamese were being yeah, bombed but, to bits by America. But no, look, undoubtedly there were lots, there'd be lots of Americans, a lot of Brits who were unhappy about that, but it's with the likes of you and, and Jeremy Corbyn, uh, a, a, a non-stop you know, criticism of, and I'm, I'm all for it in a democracy, absolutely criticising government policy. It's, you know, it's basically our job to analyse and criticise where we find fault in a democracy. Um, but at every opportunity, uh, supporting those who are opposed to Western liberal democracies, um, they're, they're, that is not What's a charge which Jeremy Corbyn can entirely escape? I mean, Jeremy and myself aren't opposed to democracy. We spent our lives fighting elections. We're completely. Well, hold on, you backed you backed regimes. You backed regimes like Cuba, like Venezuela. I mean, you know, you've been very supportive of the Soviet Union. I mean, for goodness' sake, these aren't these aren't democracies. No, but the simple fact is when Castro came to power in Cuba, it was a right wing corrupt dictatorship tied in Two with the American don't make mafia, a right. and we supported. Um, the Cubans having the right to manage their own affairs and not have that government overthrown by um, America. No, but but, but, you, but you guys were also happily supporting a, a, a Cuban leader who doesn't allow freedom in his own country. I've been to Cuba. But well, you, if you, if you did, say the wrong thing in Cuba, you end up in jail. And ask her why she provides support for Saudi Arabia. But you know, oh, bah. Which is most, probably bah. The most brutal, undemocratic uh, government Ken, I absolutely world. agree with you. But this is, this is the whataboutery that we hear. You know perfectly well why, right, every single uh, British leader, Labour, Tory, and I bet the Lib Dems would do it as well if they ended up in power, uh, uh, not just in a coalition, that you end up having to side with the Saudi Arabian regime as the lesser of two evils in terms of the alternatives if that Saudi regime falls. They're a horrific, horrible regime. Lowering the flags when the Saudi king dies, I was absolutely appalled by that. I share your revulsion of that horrific regime. However, we don't live in a perfect world and sometimes British governments have to support uh, or back up or at least you know pretend to support regimes that don't like. Backbench Labour Labour MPs and Labour mayors don't have to do that, though, do they? Yes, you do. You live in a world where you know you have to deal with the governments that are there. I was trying to get uh, Chinese companies to invest in Britain when I was mayor. I didn't mean to say I supported the Chinese government. 
I mean, you've got to deal with the world as it is, and the vast majority of governments are very unattractive, um, and some of them are monstrous. There are lots of them I'd like to see overthrown. But, you know, support for Cuba... Does that include the Venezuelan government, government, by the way? ...looking after its people. Does that include, the ve- does that include Ken? By America. Ken, does that, when you say there are lots of nasty governments you'd like to see overthrown, does that include the Venezuelan government? Oh, the Venezuelan government has absolutely transformed the quality of life. Yeah, when, um, people having to eat their pet in. dogs because they're starving. Are you saying you still support... Wait, wait, Ken, Ken. Are you saying you still support the Venezuelan government, even what's happening now? Yes, because there's an wow. election coming up. And I'm certain that the present government will be re-elected. But yeah, yeah, because if you America stop the opposition from standing, that they will get re-elected. Yes, that government by economic sanctions, <sighs> and you've got extreme right-wing elements um, committing terrible violence and murders to try and overthrow a government because it supports the mass of the population. Well, supporting the mass of the population wouldn't leave the, them, despite in one of the most oil-rich countries in the world, uh, basically <clears throat> scrabbling around in poverty. Yes, but the simple fact yes, is but. that when... Yes, but. Chavez Do you really just came... say yes, but? Yeah. You're a socialist and you just said came... yes, but about people not having enough food to eat. And you said yeah, yes, when but. When Chavez came to power, uh, Venezuela had 200 families super rich that cornered all the wealth. He started introducing no, no, a Ken, better world... No, no, Ken, no one's defending Chavez. I'm asking you about the current government. That we're no longer education. dealing with Chavez. We're dealing with a current corrupt, nasty regime that is, that is damaging democracy in that country and has plunged that royal rich country into poverty. And you're saying, yes, but... We've had this all the, through my life. American governments try and destroy and overthrow any regime that's actually looking out for its own It's got own nothing people, to do with why the Venezuelan people countries. are living in poverty. They've still got oil to sell. They just can't yeah. get it out of the ground cost efficiently because they're a socialist regime and they can't do it properly enough. Yes, but on what backgrounds has America got the right to undermine a, a democratically elected government, um, have sanctions against it, and I'm sure when 30 years' time, when all these documents come out, we'll find that the CIA has been actively involved in trying to overthrow And on government. what grounds do you, supposedly a Democrat, supporting the leader of the Labour Party right now, on what basis do you have uh, to support a government, which no doubt he still supports as well, which has basically uh, trampled on the opposition's right to stand in elections in a democracy? I, I, I don't know how you look yourself in the mirror in the morning, Ken. I really don't. Well, i tell you how I do, because I, if you look, all the papers that are really making a big song and dance out of this, are owned by multi-millionaires. They're making it all up. Money offshore. They're terrified if Jeremy Corbyn is prime minister, he's going to make them pay their fair share of tax. So they'll do anything to prevent him getting into down. Is this Street. basically a right-wing media conspiracy? All these claims about Jeremy Corbyn? Yeah, just uh, we've had this for decades. So, uh, almost 100 years ago, when we had our first Labour government, uh, the Mail and the Telegraph were showing the Zinoviev letter, which they claimed had been drafted by Stalin's agents, and it was about how to turn a Labour government into a communist Okay, so why doesn't Jeremy Corbyn sue? I mean, that would be the right thing to do, then. Why doesn't he... You can crowd... He could crowdsource the funding, no question at all, in about five minutes. Why doesn't he sue all of the newspapers that are making these claims about him? Well, hang on. What access does he have to them? What do you mean? What access does he have to? He can read the papers. If he says these are claims, that, uh, if he says that these claims are being made in the right-wing media conspiracy <laughs> press in Britain, if he says yeah. these are untrue, why doesn't he just take legal action? Well, but, yeah, but Jeremy's made it absolutely clear. None of it's true. Well, how can he prove? I mean, he doesn't. Oh no, you know some... perfectly well under our libel laws, he doesn't have to prove it's untrue. He, those pa- those newspapers have to prove that it is true. He could he could sue. Why doesn't he sue? Well, I mean, one Tory MP actually repeated all these smears yesterday on their website and Jeremy's lawyer told to take it down or we're suing you. He immediately removed it. Yeah, well, he, he, he doesn't have the evidence to back up the claim if the newspapers have the evidence. But you're saying Jeremy Corbyn, as far as you know, is not planning to take legal action. Well, I have no idea. Okay. I haven't had a as far as you know. about yeah. all this. I mean, the simple fact is that we will have these lies carrying on. There will be more... They'll do anything to stop Jeremy getting into Downing Street in order to um, show they can carry on being tax dodgers. OK, Ken Livingston, former Labour mayor of London and friend of Jeremy Corbyn. You know, it's still... Uh, thank you, but it still absolutely blows my mind. People can defend the Venezuelan regime. And the response is always, yes, but Saudi Arabia. Yeah, you know, no one's pretending Saudi Arabia's a nice country. I'd have nothing to do with them if it was up to me. But that doesn't mean I would still then go on spouting about how Venezuela is a beacon of hope for socialism when it's actually about uh, uh, people scrabbling around trying trying to find enough food to feed their kids because of a nasty socialist uh, totalitarian regime. But, hey, 